For a little over 25 years, the advent of the internet and e-commerce has been changing the landscape of retail shopping. That's been very apparent in music retail specifically. Today, I wanna to tell you about the impact that the internet and recently the pandemic has had when it comes to music retail. Stay tuned. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, visit our Teespring store linked below for our custom designed t-shirts. So as I said at the outset today, we are going to be talking about online, alamomusic.com, the internet, and how it has affected music retail. You might say, that today we are going to peel back the curtain, not just on our song catcher poster starring Aiden Quinn, but actually on the internet landscape as a whole and what it has done for music retail. So let's go back in time to the late 90s, the dot-com era, when all of these companies were starting up and they were trying to create e-commerce websites, website for everything from tracking your baby's diapers and so forth. And e-commerce was definitely starting in its infancy to take its foothold. Now, at the time, nobody was shopping on things like Amazon.com, but eBay was starting to take root. Now we have Amazon, we have Reverb for guitars, and all sorts of other websites. Every company that tries to sell a good, whether one that it creates or one that it is a dealer for and resells, basically has to have a website. But what has that done for music retail? Because when you think about a music store, there's a huge swath of what that can mean. Historically, most of those stores were mom and pop local businesses. And sadly, so many of them have died. Now, a lot of people want to point the finger at Guitar Center. And yes, Guitar Center, which started as its own independent music company, did become a behemoth in the 90s and 2000s, spreading throughout the country and, in some cases, causing the shuttering of local music stores. Where we are situating in downtown San Antonio on Main Avenue, there actually used to be an entire music row, various music stores that were here, all selling their wares together. Similar things existed in other cities like in New York, but those are, for the most part, gone. We're the only music store left in downtown San Antonio period, while there are other big box stores and independent stores that have been able to thrive like us within this city. But what seems to be the case is that the only stores that really can survive in this day and age are those who have learned to adapt to the realities of the internet. So today I want to talk to you, the people who watch this channel, but also maybe some of the dealers that are out there, because if you have not learned to adapt yet, it's basically what they say in Moneyball. You adapt or you die. The truth is that more and more people are buying online. Even if they eventually buy in the store, that's not where the shopping experience starts. They start by doing research and looking for what it is they want to purchase. Most often, the buying decision is made before they ever step foot in the store. That is the power of the internet. Now it's gone from even not stepping foot in the store to buying online, period. And the pandemic has done nothing but accelerate that. Now, when it comes to music retail, the thing that I want you to understand in peeling back this curtain is that it is not an even playing field. So, for whatever reason, there have been restrictions when it comes to buying online. Now, I remember way back when, in the early 2000s, Taylor Guitars was one of the companies that very early on put restrictions on selling online. There were dealerships that lost their dealership because they refused to listen to that request and they continued to sell Taylor guitars online. At the time, there was no advertising price available. If you wanted to buy a Taylor, you had to go into your dealership. You had to talk to that dealership you know, and deal with the pricing and everything that they gave you. Were they priceless? Yes, but things like advertised pricing wasn't something that Taylor allowed. Now, at some point, that evolved, where they did allow, of course, their dealers to sell online. Why? Well, because that's where e-commerce, that's where buying was moving to, like I just explained. It's really kind of old school thinking. It's, it's myopic, to be honest, to allow someone to sell your good, but not allow them to sell it 
online where people are buying. We still see this to a great extent in the piano market. As a piano store, we are not allowed to sell a lot of pianos directly on our website. We can advertise what we have and show you the specs and everything, but when it comes to buying it, you have to contact us. That shows that pianos are basically out of step or behind step of where the rest of music retail has gone to, which is kind of typical for that older, more traditional segment of music retail, and it's evolving just like everything. Now, that example I gave with Taylor Guitars still exists to a certain extent. We sell Taylor Guitars on our website. Every other dealer is allowed to sell Taylor Guitars on, our web on their websites. If they haven't adapted to the realities of the internet, they are in a losing game. But certain dealers are allowed to sell in other places, not just on their website. And this is something that various manufacturers have done for years. It doesn't just exist in musical instruments. It exists throughout different segments of commerce, whether it's clothing or whatnot. Manufacturers can place stipulations on where and how different companies can sell their goods. Now, probably the biggest offender is Gibson, which is a t-shirt that Josh is wearing, staying behind the camera as I'm talking to you right now. But Gibson has been the latest to you know, evolve with the idea of e-commerce. Even just a few years ago, in the mid, like the, two, the teens of the 2000s, right? Gibson was not allowing most companies that sell their product to sell even on their own website. Now you're telling me, wait, I've seen them for sale everywhere. No, you haven't. You've seen Gibson for sale on Guitar Center's website. You've seen them for sale on Sweetwater's website. You've seen them for sale on you know, Music Zoo or Z Zounds. But think about independent shops, maybe shops in your own city. If you went to their website, could you buy a Gibson product? No. Now, with the change in leadership, change with this kind of attitude toward the internet automatically started to change as well. One of the first things out of the gate was you can put up your own pictures of the guitars that you have in stock. You can make them available, but people cannot buy them on your website. They have to come in the store. That was the first sign of something that was coming about with the change. Now, what has really accelerated this is the pandemic. Now, we've done videos on this channel before talking about the realities of the pandemic when it comes to music retail and guitars more specifically. The pandemic has caused a lot of people who are stuck at home to buy things, maybe to return to hobbies or embrace hobbies that they've wanted, also to buy gear that they now need for working from home, doing audio video and things like that. What that has done is accelerated e-commerce, just like it did with every other good. Think about the companies, the grocers that are trying to figure delivery out, curbside pickup, you know, uh, order online and get it to you. There has been a boom that was already coming because so many of us are stuck at home. We can't go to physical stores up until this point in so many different places that really e-commerce had to uh, you know, thrive. It just had to within this situation. What that has done for manufacturers is made them take a long, hard look at some of their policies. I mean, think about it. If you are a manufacturer who has a dealership relationship and they've purchased a bunch of stuff from you and now this pandemic happens and you don't allow them to sell those things online, are they going to be able to sell them if nobody can come to their store? No. And what ends up happening? Well, those, those places shut their doors and then that company has one less outlet for their goods. And so thankfully, manufacturers have seen the truth of the future with e-commerce and they are allowing dealers, even the most restrictive ones like Gibson, Great Strymo, fantastic pedal company we love, they've always been very restrictive to protect their product um, and now they are allowing this too in response to the pandemic. So if you go to our Refurb channel right now, you'll see Gibson guitars available. Now it's still one of these kind of growing things. So not every dealer is available to do that or allowed at this point. But the future's coming. I mean, if you look down the light, it's not a train heading for you. It's just the fact that everything has to be online because that's how people are buying, whether it's shipped to them or they eventually come into the store to get it. Now, that's where I think the future's going, but there is a double-edged sword, a dark side to this. And that is seen in the latest announcement from Behringer or Music Tribe in general. They are no longer going to be working with individual dealerships. They're going to be selling their wares directly online and through very select dealers, companies 
just the very select, like Sweetwater and Toman and Guitar Center. You know, the, the biggest of the biggest companies are able to carry their products and nobody else. Now, we as a retailer have long seen this coming. In fact, one of the reasons that we do these channels is to inform you, the buyer, of the great things that are available, give you our honest answers and opinions, and also to provide value of what we do. I do think a time's coming that manufacturers will look at a dealer that does nothing more than put their product on a shelf as being kind of unimportant in the grand scheme of things. Because if all they do is stock their product to eventually ship to a customer, well, that manufacturer frankly, can do that themselves, whether it's through Amazon or their own website. Now, forget about the fact that there's things like customer service and dealer relationships and warranty repairs and stuff that dealers currently deal with, and as they disappear, those things will disappear right along with them. Forget about the fact that in San Antonio, if you want to bring a Fender item to be fixed, there's only one place you can bring it to, which is Alamo Music, and if we didn't exist, there would be no place for you to bring a Fender guitar to. That's the reality of the game. My concern is with Behringer's move, bad ideas tend to be contagious. Fender already tries to sell direct through their website. Gibson the same. I don't see this trend changing. And that's fine. We've made peace with that a long time ago. We still believe that we have a great partnership with these companies and can offer you value as a dealer to not help only just sell you something, but to help you find the right thing and to make sure that you enjoy it for the lifetime of your playing time with that instrument. That's what I'm betting on. But the fact of the matter is that more and more companies will try to experiment with this for the sake of the bottom line. Now, if the freeze in Texas, the energy crises, and everything to do with the pandemic hasn't taught us by now, myopic ideas that only look at gains and profits in the short term never really work out in the long term. So hopefully this contagious bad idea, if it spreads, doesn't spread too far. But at the end of the day, this is what the internet has done. This is what the pandemic has accelerated. The internet is here to stay. So dealers, if you're watching this, learn, adapt, Become part of a strong, independent music dealership community. Reverb has probably done one of the biggest things to help bolster independent shops while taking their own cut in order to make sure that the items that we carry are in front of more eyes than just those who would be on our websites, if we even have a website. Dealers, if you can't buy on your website, make that change. Hire a, an intern, hire an 18 year old, trust me, they can figure it out, they can put it out there, they can make sure that people are able to shop online with you. Because it is that, it is adapt or die. The internet's not going anywhere, the pandemic's accelerated things more. Hopefully, my prayer and wish is that dealers don't, or manufacturers rather, don't go down the wrong path uh, with these changes. E-commerce is a double-edged sword but let's see all the benefits it can do, and let's be aware of all of the bad things it can bring. So that's my opinion, my rant on this subject. Hopefully that educated you a little bit about why you see things in some places and not in others, and how it's somewhat worked in the background of things. If you have had any experiences, if you're a dealer yourself, or you have experienced the shortfalls and the benefits of e-commerce and what the pandemic has accelerated, let us know in the comments below. After all, we are a guitar channel, and we're just trying to shoot you straight about the truth of things. At the end of the day, the very best guitar in the world, whether you bought it in person or online, is the very best guitar that, or is the guitar that you're playing. And that's what we want to help you do. Keep playing, finding the right stuff. If you're new to our channel, this is what we're all about. So make sure that you subscribe. Help us get to 100,000 subscribers. We're on our way there, and we're doing a big giveaway once we get there. So every subscribe helps. Make sure you like the video so other guitar-minded people get to see it in their pop-up list and comment below. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.